missing after leaving his workplace on foot in the Waikanae area on Friday morning. After leaving his car and bank cards at work, CCTV footage located him walking towards Ngaio Road in Waikanae. Police have also received a possible sighting of Joe walking eastwards on Elizabeth Street at around 8.15 to 8.20 on Friday morning. Since then, he has not been seen. I'm TJ. Welcome to New Zealand Mysteries. We're going to look at the disappearance of Joe Pryor. He's missing now currently in New Zealand and we want to help find him. So let's get into the story and see how we can do that. That clip audio was from onenews.co.nz. We will have links in the description box or source uh, box below to every article that we uh, look at in every page. So you can catch up with that one, the rest of it. Let's look about where we're talking about quickly first. So uh, on screen we've got the North Island of New Zealand and bear with me with my computer guys, you know how shitty it is. Um, but let's go look at where this is. So if you're not sure, Wellington which is our capital uh, city is down here and we're looking here at uh, a small town called Waikanae and this is where Joe is missing and uh, you can see that there's a lot of greenery, a lot of bushland around, it's quite a small place. Let's find out about Joe. So this is getindiannews.com, not something I've looked at before but they do give us some information. This was on November 28th. Just bear in mind it is December the 1st, a Wednesday here now. Who is Joe Pryor missing? New Zealand new image of missing Waikanae man Joe Pryor. One family is currently going through the immense pain and it's very difficult for them to come out of this pain until they find a missing person. The search continues for a 63-year-old Kapiti father who left work on Friday 26th of November 2021 and wrote on a whiteboard that he had come back, or he would come back two hours later, but did not. Cops and members of the public are presently looking for a Waikanae man whose name is Joe Pryor. A spokesperson of police asserted Pryor was still missing on Sunday 28th, uh, and today, obviously, December the 1st, he, first, he is still missing. Who is Joe Pryor? So, in a given statement on Sunday, cops got a possible sighting of Joe Pryor between 8.15am and 8.20am on Friday, walking eastwards on Elizabeth Street in Waikanae. And we'll take a little uh, look at that information further on. He is explained as wearing blue overalls, carrying a backpack, and putting on a white and orange bucket hat. Joe's daughter Shannon started or stated it was very out of character for him to leave the work at the time of day, let alone not return at all. She states, we just want dad here for chips and a beer. I do not understand where he is. I just want him to be back home. Joe left his work, which is Metco Engineering, around 8.05am on Friday and wrote, be back at 10.30 on a whiteboard. After that, he took his backpack, phone, car key but left all his bank cards at work when checked the cctv footage views him leaving on foot again we will we'll see that he walked from omahi street and towards nio road and has not been seen since she states her father was a homebody and loved to follow his daily routines like clockwork one thing which we find strange she said that morning was that he did not turn on machines at work which he usually does every day he is also a hard worker and would not usually leave work for two hours during office time. She did not know for sure. She had suspicions he may have just required time and space. She said the entire usual thing about men's mental health with men bottling things up. My father is one of those persons. In his right mind, he would not do this. She had travelled to Waikanae from Hamilton. Her brother Lee came from Palmerston North to assist with the search. The family was hoping that they will find Joe Pryor soon. The 25-year-old set up a social media page on our Facebook, which is being updated daily, and we will have that information below as well. So let's have a quick look at a couple of pictures here. Now, this is the backpack that Joe was wearing. Now, I'm getting this information off the Facebook page that was set up by his uh, family which we'll have links to and we'll visit other parts of that uh, later on. But you can see he left work here uh, and it does mention him being spotted outside a church here 
with an orange bucket hat. Uh, and then Elizabeth Road uh, is down here, Elizabeth Street. So there was a sighting of him down here recently as well. And we'll find out more about that. Let's watch uh, a small video if we can. I'm not sure if we can watch this one. Okay, this is a still photo of him leaving work. Now, what I've noticed is he, well, this one's outside the Waikanae Library. I don't see him wearing the hat that was mentioned. So I can only presume that the hat is in the bag that he's carrying. Uh, there's no other sightings of it on there. Let's try and look at these videos. This is him leaving the office. He looks like he's purposely, you know, walking with purpose, like he knows where he's going. Very interesting. There is another one here, but it's a bit sideways. Um, so I'm not quite sure how we're supposed to see anything, but um, this is him down the bottom here, just walking away. And again, he looks like he knows where he's going or purposely walking to. Let's get some more information. We're going to go to the nzherald.co.nz. This was on the 30th of November. Vanished family of missing Waikanae man still find or hope to find him alive. Joe Pryor gets up at the crack of dawn most mornings for a swim at Romati Beach. He works as a sheet metal engineer. He is kind and polite and on Friday morning he vanished. The 63-year-old left a note on a whiteboard outside his workplace at Metco Engineering in Waikanae saying he would be back by 10.30am. He never returned. That morning he was spotted by a customer of his walking away from the railway track outside the St Luke's Church on Elizabeth Street. Today new CCTV footage has emerged showing him walking further up Elizabeth Street. The street runs parallel with Waikanae River before turning into Le Kalingi Road, which is surrounded by hills and bush. In response to the new information, searchers will walk through the surrounding paths and check Department of Conversation Huts or Conservation Huts in the area. A police spokesman said the sightings of Joe walking along Elizabeth Street were between 18am and 8.45am on Friday. Search and Rescue have been searching bush and farmland in that area today and will continue there tomorrow, the spokesperson said. Joe's son Lee said it was possible his dad had gone bush. He said it's definitely unlike him and he doesn't have the best knees for it, but in saying that he had his walking shoes on, so it's a possibility for sure, he told the Herald. Lee was alerted to his dad's disappearance when his concerned sister rang him on Friday. He drove from where he lives in Palmerston North to be with his family. He says, I wasn't worried on Friday, but when he didn't come back on Friday night and then we were still searching on Saturday, that's when you start worrying a bit more. Lee said it was very unlike his father, who has no history of mental health issues, to just disappear. Lee has been holding up okay during the day when he is busy helping to coordinate the search effort or is out physically searching with volunteers. He said, but when it gets to the evening time, you sort of lose it a bit. Dark thoughts start racing through your head. It doesn't quite, well, feel quite real to me. I've never gone through anything like this before. It's just a bit weird. And our heart goes out to him and the rest of his family. This is a very heartbreaking time for them. Lee was initially working on the theory his dad had become trapped or locked in a room somewhere on a job, but as the days have dragged on, he has become less certain. Lee says parts of the search have been very difficult and a bit scary. He says, when I was looking around a couple of building sites the other day, I was thinking I really don't want to see him lying down somewhere hurt or anything. He says, I hope he's just getting some time to himself or going for a walk somewhere because that way he's probably less likely to be hurt and is okay. On day five, it would be quite serious if he was hurt. Hundreds of people have been involved in the search for Joe. It's being coordinated at his workplace and online through the Facebook page set up, which we'll look at. Almost 6,000 people are now following the page, and a Give a Little page has also been set up. I'll also have the links to that in the description box below. Over the course of half an hour this morning at the search party headquarters, a stack of pizzas, three plates of sandwiches and a pasta bake arrived from members of the community 
wanting to chip in. I've got to say, the amount of members of the community that are trying to help this family is so lovely. It's awesome. Phone numbers, weather forecasts, the plan for the day and locations were all mapped out on several whiteboards. Dozens and dozens of areas were ticked off in an extensive areas, or areas searched list. And I won't read out all of these, but you can obviously come to this page and have a look. The flood of community support has been humbling for Joe's family and they are extremely grateful for the help they have received. Between 20 and 40 volunteers are searching, door knocking or dropping off missing person flyers in the community today. A misty haze covered the coast, turning to rain at times, meaning drones weren't able to be used. But three drones have been up in the air over the course of the search in better conditions. They have been able to use thermal imaging, but have only detected goats and rabbits up the valley and around the river. Police do not believe at this stage the circumstances of Joe's disappearance are su suspicious, but believe he is still somewhere in the wider Wellington region. When Joe disappeared, he was wearing blue overalls and later an orange and white bucket hat, along with a travel marvel backpack. He is described as being 178 centimetres tall and thin built. His son uh, Lee said, we're just hoping it's resolved soon. We're kind of hoping he just shows up at home. We just want him safe. And we want that for the family and for Joe as well. Let's go to this one. Stuff for co.nz search for missing man joe prior shifts south following multiple trips and this was november 30th as well the family fa uh, family run search for missing cavity resident joe prior has moved south following possible sightings of the man who has not been heard from since friday search coordinator quinton busser said searchers have received multiple tips that someone fitting joe's description had been seen on marine parade in paraparumu and you've got to excuse my uh, pronunciation. I'm from the North Island. I've never been there, unfortunately. So sometimes my pronunciation isn't great. But thanks for bearing with me. The 63-year-old went missing after leaving the Metco Engineering Workshop where he works in Waikanae last week, leaving a note saying, be back at 10.30 on a whiteboard. CCTV, which was seen, shows him leaving on foot. Busser, who is the partner of, of Joe's daughter Sharon, said the information gathered yesterday was the searcher's first lead after days of fruitless searching. He said it's given us something to go off. We've had a couple of days without anything. About 10 people had turned up first thing on Tuesday morning to continue looking for Pryor or Joe and we're concentrating on searching and door knocking in the vicinity of Marine Parade. I will let you know soon how you can uh, help in that search too. The search is still being coordinated from the Metco workshop. Busser estimated 100 people were searching on Monday and expected to have more volunteers turn up throughout Tuesday. A police spokeswoman on Tuesday said nothing new had come to light and inquiries were ongoing. On Monday, police said Pryor was believed to still be in the wider Wellington region and his disappearance was not being treated as suspicious. And remember, this is Wednesday, December the 1st here in New Zealand right now. Just very quickly, I'll put the information, uh, the file number for Joe in the description box below, but I'll also have these in there as well. If you have any info about the cases I cover, you can call Crime Stoppers 0800 555 1, which is anonymous. Please check out our Facebook page, uh, send me some links or some suggestions on nzmissing at gmail.com. Uh, I not always well and I spend a lot of time on the cases so if you can support the channel with a three dollar donation please go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash nz mysteries and uh, the rest of the information will be below please give this video a thumbs up a like and subscribe hit the notification bell to all so that when I post updates uh, you will be notified please do this it helps the videos get further and it means more people see them so share as much as you can so quickly before we go to the Facebook page and have a look at the information there this is the give a little page uh, help Joe's family to access the resources they need to bring him home. So it does have a, a blurb there about the information we've already talked about and uh, it's at nearly $8,000 so that's really really generous of the community. Let's take a look at the Facebook page and 
this has got over 6,000 members, so it's absolutely amazing. It's called Bring Joe Pryor Home. Now, we've got some information here. They're looking for landowners to search their properties and report back on the main locations. Post once completed so we can mark it off. They need trampers and hunters who are prepared to search off the beaten track to make contact with us. Headquarters is at Metco Engineering where he left from, where he works. So you can register your details there. They've got a Gmail, bring Joe Pryor home at gmail.com uh, if you know any information. Uh, this is amazing. The amount of people that are checking in and, you know, offering to help. It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. So then they have got some other information here that will help us. Um, commenting has been turned off, but they're trying to concentrate on information. Please refrain from speculating about Joe's situation. He is a healthy man with no known mental or physical health conditions. He is a dedicated worker and loving father and husband. He works hard as a sheet metal worker and is very much a homebody. He was not in any financial strife and any deviation from his usual is very much out of character. So that's really interesting to know. Now they have so much information here. They have how you can get flyers and, and that, how you can send in video information if they ha have that. But I wanted to look at this and this is a frequently asked question page. So there's a couple of things I wanted to sort of go off. Uh, he was wearing blue over overalls and later an orange and white bucket hat with the overalls along with the backpack on his back. Under his overalls he was wearing black shorts and a blue top that you can just see poking out the top of his overalls. He potentially also may have had a long sleeve navy top with him. He did not have his wallet on him. His car has been searched which was left outside his work. Uh, let me see, it was not known, this is about his backpack, it is not backpack I should say, it is not known if Joe had been taking the backpack to work regularly or was in, what was inside I should say, but I mean the, the hat had to be inside really. The backpack is shown to be carried in a number of different ways in the footage. Speculation about why he was carrying it in that way or what was inside the backpack is not helpful to the investigation and will be removed from the comments. Thermal drones have been utilised in the search for Joe and overviews of the search areas are being shared directly with the family. Uh, Joe is not a tramper and due to the distance uh, to this Paikakariki Bay track here that they're talking about, it's not thought that that would be likely he would go there. Uh, it talks about the search and rescue and police involvement uh, regarding information obtained from his call history. He had an older model phone without tracking software. The last text message he sent was 3pm the day before he disappeared and that was to his daughter. Police have confirmed his phone was turned off at 7.45am on that day, Friday the 26th. He took his keys but not his car. His car was left at the workplace. His vehicle has been searched for clues, but nothing useful found. So, I mean, this is just a, a wealth of information here. And it says they update this like every five minutes. So, really interesting. Uh, Joe is a sheet metal engineer. He works with both residential and commercial clients. It was not common practice for Joe to visit a client at their location. Clients would come or usually come to him at the workshop. This is a sad story, but it also goes to highlight the amount of community spirit and how much the community wants to help this grieving family. And it's not that they're grieving, it's, they're just, they need to find their dad. Let's, they need to find their dad and we need to help them. So please share this as much as you can, like it, subscribe, um, all those things, because that's what gets the information out there. Go to the Facebook page, ask how you can help if you're in the area. Uh, Let's get behind this family. I hope this helps the family in some little way. I will update this when information uh, comes to hand. So thanks very much for being with me today. Uh, kia ora.